a fairly detailed test, but now since the whole problem with black lung came up, the whole medical used to be six pages. It's now gone to 26 pages. <gasps> Yeah, yeah, so and the, the potential employee having to fill in their past history, how much do they smoke, how much dust have they been exposed to, not only how much do they smoke now, but how much have you smoked in the past, when did you start, when did you stop, what's your average consumption over the years, because they've taken background information to a whole other level because they're trying to work out who's at risk if problems are found with the breathing test or the chest x-rays. So they're trying to ascertain if before they even get into mining what state their lungs are. Yeah and also really to assess the risk. Welcome to the Beers with a Miner podcast. My name is Mad Mumsy and I've been driving the huge dump trucks in Australian open cup mines for over 10 years now. I wish I had a dollar for everyone who said to me How does a little thing like you drive those big trucks? Oh, you must be rich. How do I get a job doing that? My mining friends are asked these questions all the time too. This is what started the Mad Mumsy journey to share stories and tips from living a mining lifestyle and to let others know what it's really like. Tune in each episode as I sit down for a relaxed chat, usually over a few beers with a fellow miner. Women and blokes with various experience, roles and opinions share their lessons and stories with you. Not everyone is cut out to be a miner, but why not? What does it take to thrive and survive in this industry? Now, let's dig in. Get it? Dig. Mining. Oh, I crack me up. Hello and welcome to the Beers with a Miner podcast. In this week's happy hour episode, I sit down in a doctor's office, microphones in hand. Don't worry though, I wasn't sick. I was there for a podcast interview and no, I did not have a beer. Dr. John McIntosh is a long-time friend. We first met at the Ellie Beach Writers Festival in 2015. John and his lovely wife Ellie, Elizabeth, have been good friends, mentors and role models for me ever since. They are also a real power couple here in Mackay as co-owners of the GP Super Clinics and founders of the Tough Minds app. You have the Tough Minds app, don't you? Oh my God. Head straight to your app store and download it right now. We finally got to sit down and have a chat in his lovely GP super clinic out near the university and talk all things medicals and the terrible disease black lung. What is involved in a cardboard medical? What must you bring with you and could you fail? What's the difference between cardboard medical and fit for work? Why should you practice waddling like a duck? Now, although this is cardboard medicals and more... Queensland related, the overall general conversation I think will be very helpful no matter what state you're in and going for a medical because the the tests are similar. They're testing for different similar things. The paperwork's still very similar, so still worth having a listen. Anyway, that's enough from me. Let's dig in. Get it? Dig? Mining? Ha ha, I crack me up. Hello and welcome to the podcast, Dr. John McIntosh. I'm excited that we finally get to chat today. We've been going to line this up for ages <laughs> and uh, it's really good to finally sit down here in your office at your GP super clinic here out at the, um, near the university here in Mackay. Oh, look, thanks very much, Leanne. I'm really keen to, to talk to you about um, cobalt medicals. Yeah, well, I did a Facebook Live. I've got a new group now, and it's called Mad Mumsy Live Q and A. Very yeah. original, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so, one of the things that we ended up talking about was about cobalt medicals. Yeah. And I'm like, I know just the person with all the answers because I was winging it on the fly with people watching me. So well, we'll see, won't we? If we'll see. <laughs> I know. I'll go, oh, crap, I got that wrong. <laughs> um, now. You guys, I know, are really busy. Yourself and your lovely wife, Elizabeth, Dr. Elizabeth, uh, are the owners of the GP Super Clinics here. And you also have your passion project, your Tough, tough minds. minds. That's right. Yeah, so we can talk about that um, a bit later yeah, if you great. like. We yeah. definitely, that yeah. will come into it for sure. <laughs> um, but are you ready to dig into the episode? That sounds great. 
get it? Yep. Deep <laughs> mining, mining, right? Oh, it cracked me up. That's hilarious. <laughs> So, as this podcast is called the Beers with a Minor podcast, I like to start these happy hour episodes with my guests sharing their favourite beverage and their best time to drink it. It might be a spirit, wine, or perhaps even a cup of tea. What is yours? Or so, beer, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I um, my favourite tipple is probably a glass of uh, smooth Merlot, red Merlot. Um, best time to drink it, I would say, at the end of the – actually – on the back of my boat, at, on an island like Hill Inlet, Whitehaven Beach, on the back of the boat at sunset. Oh, my God, <laughs> that's perfect. And how often do you get to do that? Dr. Oh, about Tom? twice a year. Twice a year? <laughs> oh, twice a year at Hill Inlet, but certainly a lot more often, uh, probably once a month out on the boat. So, yeah. yeah, we get out as often as we possibly can. But, gee, life gets in the way. It does. Yeah. And we and that's one of our questions right at the end, and I think we already just might have had your answer. What's your happy place? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right, out on the boat. Yeah. So with your wine, do you have ice cubes in it? No, no. 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 Do you see yeah. that as... Um, a bad thing if you put ice blocks in your red wine. Uh, when, um, I suppose it depends how hot it is. You see, it's like my uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it's, I mean, red wine isn't meant to be drunk at thirty-four degrees. So, if you are, um, and in fact, if it's such a hot day, I probably would be having a cold white wine or something like that mm. instead. But um, but you know, red wine, um, if it's thirty-four, it's too hot, so you have to cool it down. Yeah. But. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm not a Purit, Puritan at all. I mean, I've on, when I've been somewhere drinking beer, I've added ice cubes to my beer too. <gasps> I know. Stop it! But that's... you know, again, like if you're 35 or 40 degrees of temperature and your your beers are hot, I mean, you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the trouble is you got to drink them real fast before the water makes dilutes it down. But yeah. Um, but uh, yes, I'm not a Puritan. Just drink it however you like, so you can enjoy it. I think. Yeah. yeah. The, just enjoy life. Yeah. Lovely. I love it. Which is something you guys really um, promote. And that's what I love about the super clinics. This, I haven't been into this one here. I've been into the others. Yeah. And it's just so nice. And there's beautiful plant paintings on the walls. And it's just got that real nice vibe about it. Yeah, it's just like it's the doctors. It, yeah, <laughs> we, try to, we try to change the whole feeling. So when people come in, they feel like they're in a, in a relaxed lounge rather mm. than a waiting room. And, and the colours are all aimed to make people calm and relax. We have diffusers, diffusing essential oils and, you know, soft music. And even on the walls, we've got um, um, uh, inspirational quotes. So, and I have to give all that credit to Elizabeth. Yeah. <laughs> Not you, you just the, go, yes, dear, yes, dear. <laughs> whatever you like, dear. <laughs> but no, it, it is, it's really lovely. And that's, we, we've, we've, we've always disliked going going into a medical practice and smelling you know that horrible mm. alcohol smell that you get in the old days um and and old receptionists looking down their nose at people say oh you know <laughs> the, the dragons at the front desk so we yeah. we definitely want to be exactly the opposite of that yeah, yeah. and and you're doing a great job yeah that. thanks leah yeah <laughs> All right, let's talk about coal board medicals. Mm, exciting stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Not as exciting as sipping a Merlot on the back of a yacht at Wyham Beach. <laughs> yeah, well, it's exciting um, to get through your coal board medical because yes. that allows you to actually go and do the work. So That's right. Yeah. Okay. So can you explain to us? We have I have written down a few tips, so we'll see what I've forgotten <laughs> and uh, how uh, accurate my thoughts about it are. Uh-huh. Um, but... What's, in, what's involved, say, overall, and then we can go deeper into it? Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, the Cobalt Medical is a statutory requirement um, brought in by the Department of Natural Resources and Mines. Um, and um, you basically are going to be doing a, a physical examination, uh, a, a medical examination of your health, um, where we do a whole lot of different tests, um, basically hearing tests, eye tests, um, breathing tests, and then... The the uh, physical test, movement, joints, um, bending, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and the the doctor will also listen to the heart and check, um, you know, visual fields and uh, color, uh, look for color blindness and things like that. Um, so it's it's a fairly detailed test. Um, but now, since the whole problem with black lung came up, the it used to be a six page. Uh, um, questionnaire or like uh, the whole medical used to be six pages it's now gone to 
26 pages. <gasps> yeah, yeah, so and about 10 of those pages uh, I think I, maybe maybe six six or eight pages of the page the person the the potential employee having to fill in their past history. You know, how much do they smoke? How much dust have they been exposed to? Not only how much do they smoke now, but how much have you smoked in the past? When did you start? When did you stop? What's your average consumption over the years? Because they've they've taken the whole, um, you know, in, um, background information to a whole nother level because they're trying to um, work out who's at risk if problems are found with the, uh, with the breathing test or the chest x-rays. So they're trying to ascertain if before they even get into mining, what state their lungs are. Yeah, and also really to assess the risk. So this is really all about mm, risk okay. assessment. So if somebody smoked a lot or they've been working, say, in, uh, in quarries or even working um, in construction where they might be getting a lot of um, grinding dust from cement or, or, or stonework and things like that, all of that um, has exactly the same sort of, not exactly, but very similar damaging effects as coal dust. So they, it's basically trying to say this person is it low risk, medium risk, or high risk in terms of, um, of, of, of nasty stuff going into the lungs over the years? Um, so that then is used when the other uh, tests are d- done, the, predominantly the breathing t- for the lungs is the breathing test and the chest X-ray. Um, and, and by knowing that detailed history from p- past exposure, um, we can then... Uh, uh, work out the risk involved for that person, especially when we find an abnormality. Mm. Mm. And what is involved? I, that's, I didn't write down breathing tests. <laughs> step, step, look, step one, I failed already. <laughs> um, how do you test someone's breathing? Can you explain that? Yeah, so there's two ways, really. Oh, three ways. We listen to the chest with the uh, uh, stethoscope. Uh, so we're listening for noises. Um, But the sensitive tests are the spirometry, which is a blowing test. You actually physically have to take a big breath and blow the air out as hard and fast as possible and keep going for a full six seconds until your lungs are completely empty. And that measures basically how what your lung volume is like and how fast you can blow the air out. So people have lung disease like asthma obviously they have narrowed airways so the air can't be pushed out as fast so they have slow expiration um if somebody has lung disease where they've got scarring of their lungs like a, a coal worker's pneumoconiosis or black lung um the the lungs don't expand as fast so they have restricted both restricted total volume as well as um restricted airflow so, and of course, similar things happen with smoking. And one of the really difficult things about coal board medicals and interpreting the results is that both coal dust from the mines and smoking will both cause exactly the same problems with the with the lungs. Mm. So it's very hard to determine. Well, is this from your smoking or is this from the coal dust? Um, and and that is obviously. Uh, what people get referred off to the chest specialist for. Um, but fortunately, or the good news here is that at least now it's, it's recognized and accepted that coal dust alone will cause the damage to the lungs, whereas before they were like bronchi- chronic obstructive airways disease, chronic obstructive airways diseases, chronic bronchitis or emphysema. So coal dust does that in exactly the same way smoking does. So people that have not ever smoked will develop... Um, the same sort of problems with coal dust as a smoker, which is quite sad. But that's why it's so important to get the history from the person who's doing the, the, the test of the coal board medical. Um, and obviously, we also do regular tests. The other thing about the coal board now is they're much more um, definite about everybody needs a chest X-ray, which is the other test for the lungs. Um, and that's the, the breathing tests and the chest X-rays are repeated every five years or more often if there's a problem. And that only used to be underground that had to have the chest x-ray. That's right. That's Isn't right. Because I was like, woo <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a sunshine miner, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> landscape right. gardener, whatever you want to call us. I yeah, know. And, and, and really there are so many people that have been found to have black lung that have never been underground. Yeah. It's all to do with the amount of dust you're breathing in. So people in wash plants where the coal is being dumped and they're walking through this dust. And the other really interesting thing is that the – 
the um, the coal dust that causes the damage to our lungs is a certain size microns. It's really, really small, two to five microns. You cannot see it. Mm. So the dust that causes the damage is not the dust you see in the air. Oh, right. So you can be walking through air that looks absolutely clear and it can be full of the damaging dust. Mm. Obviously, usually if there's the, the dust that you can see, there's usually small bits of dust as well. But you can be uh, like the, the, the bigger bits of dust will fall faster than the fine dust, mm. the fine particles. So the dust might appear to have settled and you think oh, everything's good now, but it's still full of the really damaging particles. No. So, now so, so, <laughs> so the, the message is where you where you're breathing protection gear, and just because the air looks clear, it doesn't mean it is. Mm. And as uh, surface miners, we rarely we don't wear breathing protection yeah, most yeah, of the time. Yeah. Um, we rely on our the seals in our cabs. Cabs, what, yeah. what I've said about it in the past is. Take control of what we can in our yeah. own personal sphere yeah. of environment. So yeah. if if the seals on your truck or your dozer or something are yeah. leaking, report it. Yeah. I've seen dozer drivers come in off the coal and they look like they've Black. worked underground. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then, you know, we have to fight to get the seals yeah. fixed. This was before, like before that's a few happened. years yeah. ago. Hopefully yeah. it's a lot better yeah. now. It's yeah. changing. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's really important. And, and uh, I mean... Over the years, the, the people have been very complacent about it, and that's, of course, led to the problem we've had with black lung. Um, but now that that it's been recognized that, and, and obviously there have been lots of cases of people who haven't been underground or they've been working above ground have had the problem. So um, now everybody, hopefully, will be taking it seriously and actually paying attention. Um, if you are ending up with black soot all over your, you know, black dust all over your body, then you're going to be breathing it in. So protect yourself. Um, also, I mean, simple things I presume that you guys do, um, you know, if you get in and out of the cab, don't leave the door open for a whole length of time. You know, you walk up, you open the door, you walk and you close it. So you don't let the external dust come into your cab. Mm. And clean the filters in the air conditioners. and On a regular basis. Yeah. 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 Um, it's the little thing. So what about silicosis? That's similar, but it's actual... It's not coal dust, it's yeah. dust dust. Yeah, so, <laughs> so silico, silica um, is, is from the uh, rocks and the earth. Um, so unfortunately, when we talk about black lung and coal dust, we're actually talking about a mixture of coal dust and silica mm-hmm. um, because when there's mining done, there's always going to be rocks involved in the, in the dust, that, in, in the coal that's being extrude, extracted. Um, um, and it causes essentially exactly this. There are minor differences but essentially it causes all the same trouble. It damages the lungs, it causes scarring, it causes uh, silicosis, which is the same as uh, mm. technically scarring of the lung, damage, the damage gets worse, you, then you, you have difficulty getting the air through um, into your blood. So for the listeners, if you work in pre-strip or someone you know does or you haven't started yet and you end up in pre-strip, which is getting the dirt off the top off the top before uh-huh. you get down to the coal just as damaging yeah so yeah. you still take the same measures yeah yeah mm. i mean p- p- i mean because you can't really tell how damaging the the dust is that you're breathing in it's really important just to be sensible all the time um obviously the, the, there's going to be more silica when you're going through hard rock and you, there's kind of dust being released because there's uh, rocks being crushed. Uh, obviously, earth, uh, as in ground, that's sand and mud, doesn't, isn't as damaging as rock that is being crushed or broken or blown up. Mm. Um, so it's really the, the rock dust that causes the silicosis right. um, and of course different um, I mean there's all sorts of different dusts different types of rocks that you guys probably know a lot more than me <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you, you certainly know a lot about it <laughs> um, but but yeah I mean you always just need to realize that both coal and and simple uh, overburden is just as damaging and so you need to take it seriously yeah and I have a lot of listeners over in Western Australia of course it's hard rock yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and that's where so, the, yeah so that's that's the stuff i mean you. as you drill through that or, or break that up it releases dust and um and causes damage so mm. protect yourself we had someone very close to our family who 
uh, something, a shadow showed up. Oh, yeah, yeah. The old shadow. Uh-huh. Well, I don't know, three people now with the shadow effect uh-huh, uh-huh. in their x-rays uh-huh. and weren't allowed to go back to work. <clears throat> Hang on, have a drink. It's not a beer, Dr. John. <laughs> <laughs> they were not allowed to go back to work until they were cleared of black lung. And this was when it first really started to rear in surface mining. Mm -hmm. And they, very long story short, ended up putting it down to working in hard rock. And so, therefore, it's not their problem. It wasn't Mm. black lung. Mm. Uh, And then he had to go down to Brisbane, I think, had went and saw a specialist, lung, would it be, yeah, lung specialist. Yeah, it was right with that, yeah. And it ended up being ambiguous. As to what it was, and that is the word very uh, – I just don't like that word anymore uh-huh. because it just means, well, it nobody, might be no, or it might not be. We take, didn't know. And, and nobody he takes was, responsibility. That's right. And at first he was told he had black lung. Uh-huh. And we were all freaking out, his extended family, mm, everyone mm. around us, and he can't work, contracted, not getting paid. Mm-hmm. And if he was permanent, the mine site said he could have – been in the office just stay away from the dust you could still work Mm -hmm. but because he was a contractor they weren't obliged to do that and Mm -hmm. the people he was working for i think should have let him work in the office in town Uh but no they didn't do that so he had Uh to have all this time off no work to get told ambiguous not sure yeah but he was allowed to go back to work yeah yeah. And he's okay. Yeah. But it was a very scary time. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, now that all this attention is being put on the, especially the chest x-rays, we are picking up an awful lot of people that, are, that do have like fine nodules. And sometimes it's something as simple as um, the way the blood vessels are seen on the chest x-ray. And you see these little nodules but, or little round spots, which obviously also looks like the start of black lung. Mm. Um, so a lot of people are having to then go on and get the higher resolution CT scan uh, to actually determine what what's going on in the lung because you're seeing these little white spots. Unfortunately, chest X-rays by themselves it's a slightly coarse tool. Um, so when little things are found, um, obviously the next test, the CT scan has to be done. And but that ex- that happens very. Your story is not rare unfortunately there are so many cases of people where is it or is it not is it caused by uh, smoke their smoking is it caused by black lung uh, or uh, you know so you know if it's if it's ambiguous basically people first of all not going to take responsibility for it being a work-related uh, mm, problem exactly so if there's ambiguity on on the result um, the person both can't um will that matter that's right. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, sorry. We are in a doctor's <laughs> surgery. A, a little bit of background effect is fine. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, yeah, ambiguity is really bad because um, the people don't get paid out and, and also they might be put off work um, but not – be allowed to claim that as a as a work related injury, and if and and it may be half caused by the the work and half caused by their own smoking habits, um, but but th- th- if it's ambiguous, the the company doesn't take responsibility. Mm. So that it's really it's a really hard area to um, to get justice actually. And. How are the time frames for the x-rays going? For a while there, we were told <laughs> yeah. they had to go to America yeah, and right. there were boxes and boxes of yeah. x-rays here that weren't checked. Yeah. Like my partner, the real miner, as yeah. my yeah. people know, real <laughs> miners, they work underground. Yeah, is that Just right? ask them, they'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and he had to have an x-ray every every year, every, I can't remember, every yeah. couple of years. Yeah. He said, where's all my x-rays? They, haven't even, they hadn't even been, you know, they're not being at. checked. Yeah. So that's why they, this is how I saw it, is that's why a lot more cases were being found because a lot of x-rays were starting being to reviewed. be reviewed. Yeah. Yeah. And so therefore things were starting to show up. Yeah. And yeah. is that right? They had to go to America yeah. because we yeah. didn't have enough yeah. people for, here. Well, for the first, I don't know, six months or, or so of the process since this double reading was brought in, uh, there were no officially approved double readers in Australia. There actually 
technically were because they had the training, but they just didn't have the certificate to say they were double readers. So, yeah, for six months, all the x-rays were going over to the US to mm. be read over there. Um, and then they got the, um, the accreditation for the um, radiologists in Australia to do the secondary reading. So now the turnover is actually quite reasonable. Certainly less than three months we have the medicals done, the second reading done. It's, act- it's probably even a few weeks sometimes, I think. I'm not okay. sure. Um, it's, it's really quite quick. So now we give people a three-month um, clearance, um, and always we are well within that time frame to give them the, the final right um, um, sign-off. So three months, a three-month clearance pending x-rays. chest x-rays. That's right. Okay. That's right. And so, that's good enough if you have a job that you can go yeah, to work? Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's okay. right. So, I mean, we have the initial x-ray, which obviously will come back fine. Well, oh, hopefully it'll come yeah. back. <laughs> well, they won't pass if it doesn't. That, um, that- yeah, if there's a significant problem, then you'd probably have you'd probably do this the the follow on tests immediately. Yeah. Um, so, uh, the um, yeah the, the the turnarounds. I mean, the other thing we have to do as the doctors doing the cobalt medicals is we have to get people's old results too. So we have to chase up their past spirom- breathing tests, the spirometry. Um, going as far back as the start in the coal industry, mm. which, of course, is sometimes really, really hard. So that's why we do the three-month clearance, because it sometimes takes us, you know, a month or two to actually get those old results. So, yes, I do believe when I've had to go back and redo my coal board medical, they wanted to know where I got my that's last right. one done. That's and I'm right. like, God, I don't know, it was five years ago. I know. I think it was five yearly but back the, then. That's right. The Department of Mines will jump down after it if we don't get the past results. Because you yeah. see, you see the, the biggest problem they had in the past with the coal board medicals and the, the breathing test is that people um, could still be within normal limits, but having lost 25% of their lung capacity. You see, so uh, if in a, if somebody had really good lungs to start with, if you looked at their breathing tests over, you know, ten or fifteen years, you'd see this progressive fall off. Mm. And that, even though their breathing test was normal, if you could track that deterioration, you could get a um, a clue that black lung is is on the way, and then you could get them out of the mines or out of the exposed jobs so they don't have further damage so yeah. you 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 can essentially stop them from having a serious problem but you have to see the old x-rays because what you're looking at if you look at a single breathing test it's normal according to the criteria mm. but that person's lost 10 or 15 percent of their lung capacity and that's definitely not normal uh, there is a natural tail off in the breathing capacity as you get older but we know what that is and if it's faster than that then then we do the other tests to check out for black lung so that's an important thing for the listeners who are already in the mines and you have to go back and have another co- uh, medical yeah is to know where you got Try the one to remember. done before that's right. <laughs> <laughs> now, ask your wife guys <laughs> <She'll know. laughs> yeah so yeah they will always ask you that and and we will be fairly pushy because the, the department is making us responsible for that so um and 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 if we can't find it we have to give a very good reason why we can't find that pr- those past um breathing tests yeah so what else should they bring with them on the day um I, I suppose comfortable clothes. They're going to be up and down, um, you know, stretching and twisting and doing, uh, you know, easy to remove clothes. You know, like, um, you know, uh, uh, for example, um, like a woman was probably better in a dress. So you can check the legs and the pulses and the knees because we check the physical stuff. But you're also going to be asked to do various stretches and bending and all that. So just comfortable, loose clothes that you can get around and easily. Yeah. Um, this isn't a functional capacity test, so we're not going to make you uh, like um, jump like uh, on, up and down a step for three minutes, or you know lift twenty kilos twenty times. Um, there's some well, argument. I've got to interview. I've got to. In- <laughs> I've got to interview here. Sorry, interrupt is the oh, yeah, word. Interview. Yeah. <laughs> um, in when we did the Facebook Live, yeah. and I told a few stories about stuff I had to do for yeah. that, that test. Fit for work is another name for it. That's right. What's the, what do you uh, call it? Functional capacity. Functional capacity. Yeah. That's it. F, F, FCA. FCA. Functional capacity yeah. assessment. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I had to waddle like a duck up and yeah. down the corridor. Yeah. And so all the comments, I ended up finding a little gif of a duck waddling <laughs> and all that. And all that. I said, I am not demonstrating that. <laughs> Actually, yeah. the... Um, 
the the duck waddling can be done in the Cobalt Medical just, you know, three metres because that... Oh, that there you go, guys. Um, Get so, your duck out. Yeah. That's right. Because that tests the knees. It's mm. a really good test to look for early damage to your knee joints because um, down in that position, you're putting really large forces yeah. through your through your knee joints. And if you, if, you, if you have osteoarthritis, you can't do that effectively. So it is, a, it is actually quite a good test. Yeah. Um, and you may get it in the cobalt medically, man. It depends on the doctor doing the test. Yeah. So they have a little bit of a um, scope isn't the right word. You don't yeah. have, it's not exactly the same everywhere you go. No, no, that's right. So, um, I mean, and, and that's kind of one of the uh, – that's kind of one of the difficulties with the cobalt medical is that it's kind of half what it's not quite it's not a true fitness for work assessment it's really a monitoring process um although it's being used to say you are fit to work Mm -hmm. Uh, so if something significant is found in the cobalt medical then obviously you're going to be deemed unfit to work potentially um but it's also the other part of it is the is the um ongoing monitoring to make sure that the industry itself is not damaging the person's health predominantly hearing and and breathing mm. and shoulders <laughs> well, that's <laughs> well, it. that joints. was in the fit for work when yeah. i i refused it was t- got up to 20 kilos yeah. i was a two-man lift right two person lift uh-huh, uh-huh. and i'm like oh, and it was a high bench you know me i'm a little shorty <laughs> i said no i'm not doing it i'd already walked around the clothesline because it was in a house at a physio oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. they you know, had a yeah, house on yeah. the other side of town there and yeah. had to carry this box with weights in it out round the clothesline, put it up on this shelf. And the shelf was too high for me. And then the weights get heavier and heavier. And yeah. when a guy said, oh, No, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing my shoulder in yeah, for you. Yeah. And, she said, and I've spoken about this before on the podcast. Yeah, and she yeah. said, Well, I wish people would speak up more often. So, you know, if you feel like something's hurting you yeah. when you're doing all of those things or you are struggling, it doesn't yeah. necessarily mean you're going to fail. Yeah, that's but right. But just change it, tweak it. Yeah, At least, that's right. yeah, don't hate yourself. Yeah, yeah. And, um, I mean, the, the functional capacities are always designed by somebody and sometimes then designed by somebody who's maybe not very sensible. <laughs> So. <laughs> and has never done a pre-start on a, yeah. on a on a massive truck. I said, yeah. "One lady, I said, what am I doing this for?" I was squatting down, screwing up, and undoing big bolts and oh, yeah. nuts yeah, yeah, yeah. for three minutes. Oh. And I looked up at her and I said, "So what's this about?" What she said, "Well, we just you know have to do what they want us to do." And I was, and her reasoning was it's so that I can do a pre-start on my vehicle. And I just about fell over laughing because I said, "I need to literally go and get a step." to check the oil in my truck because <laughs> it's way up there or get someone else to uh-huh. do it for the tall people uh-huh. on the go line. Uh-huh. Yeah, so it does make you wonder sometimes. But yeah. I say you've got to go into training for it. And one day I actually had to do my cold board medical first and then straight away functional. I went and did the functional one. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But I passed. So. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I mean, I mean, they are measuring in some of those functionals they do do uh, an aerobic exercise capacity test. They where, all do, I think, up yeah. and down the ladder with the heart rate monitor on. Yeah, or they make you go to see how far you can go until you have to stop. Yeah. Um, so that way they, they measure your your actual fitness level. Mm. Um, and that's, I mean, if you are going to be going to do a functional capacity, you probably should, you know, for the week before, start doing a few exercises because they're going to work you out. They and, are, and, that's right. And, uh, but that's not the Cobalt Medical. No, which is, well, we're kind of covering all <laughs> yeah, of them as well, yeah. but... Um, so another question that came up was about, or well, I kind of brought it up, about what drugs that you might uh, might be on. Mm-hmm. It seems like half the planet are on uh, anti, antidepressants uh-huh, or uh-huh. high blood pressure yeah, or yeah. blood pressure tablets. Yeah, yeah. So when you go along and you've got your six pages to fill in, yeah. do you need to bring with you evidence of the drugs that you're on or do you just write down, at least no, know what they're called, not yeah, just yeah, blood yeah. pressure tablet? Yeah, or? no, that's right. You need to know the drug name. Right, yeah. So, I mean, certainly um, you don't need to know dosages. That's probably not very important unless it's something – very like uh, that would cause drowsiness like uh, mm-hmm. sleeping tablets or pain, strong painkillers but hopefully I mean people going into the mines are probably not going to be on those sort of drugs anyway because yeah. uh, they'd all 
probably all show up on drug testing. Yeah, yeah which, we'll, which we'll get to. <laughs> but, uh, and and it, it, it impair performance. So, um, you know, operating machinery, you're going to have risk. So, but yeah, names is what's important. You don't need to take the, the tablets long. And this is all reliant on honesty as well. Mm. So, for example, I mean, when you're giving your history, um, obviously, People can lie, but it's not wise to lie because there are going to be other ways that information can be obtained from usual doctors or if, if there's a problem and you found and, and they then double check and show that you've actually not given the f- proper information in your when you're giving your history, then they obviously wipe their hands of you and you have no leg to stand on. So mm. you're much better off to be completely honest and say, this is what I'm on and these are my past illnesses rather than trying to hide things that um, – uh, that that you, that have happened to you in the past. Just because you've had an illness doesn't mean say you're not going to be fit to work in the coal industry. Um, because uh, you know, for example, um, you can have quite profound deafness and be past, uh, you know, outside of the range that's acceptable within the coal board limits. But if your job doesn't require hearing for safety purposes, like if if you're not uh, safety critical to have hearing, then then you can work and and do the job. Then you can be approved to do the job. You just the doctor just has to have the common sense to say, you know, this person is working in an office doing computer work and does not need hearing for safety. Whatever you understand what I mean? Yeah, oh, that, so. <laughs> and that was the exact point that I was thinking of. Someone working in the office who never steps foot. Yeah, in the that's right. Um, and probably should have started with this, but with the coal, when you go in and start with the paperwork, you write down what role. Yeah, that's right. Um, so, yeah, like for me, job? it was always dump truck operator, and then they used to ask, "Will you ever be going underground?" And I said, "Hell no! <laughs> <laughs> You're dreaming, not ever." And we'd laugh, break the ice, you know. <laughs> Am right. I, have I passed? <laughs> and um, the other one was rescue. Uh, no, no. Oh, I don't think I've been asked that, but that oh, is another one. Yeah. Um, if I was ever going to pull dragline cables, oh. because that was something that. And that was one of the reasons why we had to do the lifting of the weights right. to check our structure and yeah. our um, our back strength yeah. as well. Yeah. Because sometimes if you're spare and there's a drag line move on or maybe it's been raining or something and you've got to just back the car up and hook on. Kate, You don't literally yeah. pull it yourself. <laughs> you bend down. And, uh-huh. <laughs> well, I've never pulled up <laughs> your, Yeah, you tie a sling onto the back of the car and, yeah. and drive right. it. So. There are some jobs that Maybe. are more physical, yeah. like the pumpies and all that. Yeah. They would do a yeah. lot more physical. Yeah. So yeah. It, that also depends on what's tested, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, the underground miners also have to often walk a lot further. Like yeah. they, uh, they've got the long slope going downhill and they've got to be wearing all their gear. Their gear, and, so, it, and it's very uneven down yeah. there. Lots of yeah. Yeah. crap. So, they need so, to clean it up. <laughs> Well, all this rubbish, I all this know. dirty I coal. I mean, really. Yeah. <laughs> so Trip yeah, hazards everywhere. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the fitness levels um, for underground miners actually do need to be higher because they do have to physically escape if they need to, and they mm. can't always drive in and out. Yeah, and they've got to carry their self rescuers around yeah. and their tools and stuff. That's right. But, oh, I, I, you know, we have to as. Dump truck operator, anyway, you know, on the surface, carry your backpack, you yeah, know, with yeah. all your magazines in yeah. it, all your, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all your notes for me, all my lists, the real list head. So, um, what about hearing tests? I did share this in the group, in the Facebook Live, about some of the hearing tests and the different situations that I've been in. Oh, yeah. And because someone said they'd never had a hearing test. So basically, you put headphones on, or you you tell it your way and see how. Um, so yeah, so I mean, hearing tests should be done in a in a soundproof booth, mm. um, and obviously um, they close the door. You put your headphones on, and then the the um, headphones release. 
um, sounds of different frequencies, so low pitch to high pitch at different volumes. And then you just got to press a button every time you hear a noise and it's testing your two ears separately. So we can tell basically if you've got hearing loss or hearing damage from past noise exposure or from past illnesses or in ear infections. Um, and obviously over time, that's, that is one of the really important tests um, in, in, the, in any industry that's involved with noise because obviously continued exposure to noise results in initially high frequency deafness and then progresses across all frequencies as it gets worse and then industrial deafness that's right and that's yeah. uh, that's industrial deafness yeah so yeah it's it's really important that um I mean, the, the equipment that, where they're doing the test should be good and it should be in a, in a – if you can hear outside noises and you get a dodgy result, then you need to say that's not fair because I could hear the truck driving down the road or all I could hear was the beeping of the cars outside mm. because if you're hearing outside noise, that's going to interfere with the soft noises and stop you from hearing the soft noises. So you really should be in a soundproof booth if it's going to be done properly. If you pass the test, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so um, yeah. so um, I've had a few of those. I go, well, that was dodgy. <laughs> <laughs> really, I passed. And this is what we were laughing about in the group. I, I said, and because and you've got to push the button. Yeah, that's right. And at the end, you're like, oh, did I hear something? I, I know. Like, and if you just go beep, 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 well, then they usually, with me, they take you out and you have a look at the scale and you can see where it was and when you were meant to be. <laughs> oh, it would really show up if you were just beeping the That's whole time. Right. Like, Mate, right. you're guessing. <laughs> and and also um, the the um, the the sounds are not at regular intervals, mm. so they deliberately don't say there's going to be a beep every three seconds. So you you kind of know when it should yeah. come. Yeah, so, it really starts doing your head in. Uh, oh my god, is that noise? I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm hallucinating so. now. <laughs> Especially, I've had to do one after night shift, and oh, yeah. I, I, I just was not focused but, at all. But it I does. passed it. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just relax, and and if you hear a noise, press the button. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what about if you have hearing aids? How do they do their hearing? T- do they still do hearing tests? With a hearing aid in, well, yeah, how does yeah. that work? I've never um, known. Well, the, you can do the hearing test with the hearing aid in, and yeah. you can do it with as and without the hearing aid, so you can have both results. Um, obviously, in most instances, as long as the person is able to wear their hearing aid at work, then um, there's no they will be judged according to their ability to hear. So okay. with the hearing aid in, yeah. so they're not you're not going to fail because you have got a hearing aid. Yeah. Um, and that's something you need to. That would discuss. that would be in your questions yeah, that's and right. stuff. And that's right. Yeah, make sure you tell them. Yeah, Even if you if, haven't got it on that yeah, that day, right. let them know. Yep. yep. All For right. Sure. What else have we got on here? What about um, eye tests? Okay, so I mean, eye tests basically they, they do test visual acuity. Um, so that's. Your, your long distance reading they'll usually test your close vision for um, you know fine print um, and the the other tests the other two tests is color blindness so you look at the book where you say all the numbers and you've got to follow squiggly lines. Oh, I don't think I've ever done Never that. Never done one. that? Oh, okay. No. And it sounds interesting. <laughs> I think it sounds like something I'd remember doing. <laughs> uh, and, and actually, it's, I mean, the, the funny, when you're doing the test, it's really weird when people can't, when they are colorblind or do have uh, color deficiencies because they just can't see. Like you look at it and think, oh, that says 36. And they see nothing, and they just can't follow the numbers. Or mm. and and some of the numbers. Oh, they are, the patterns. Yeah, in the, yeah. I have to. And 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 sometimes somebody who's colorblind will read a say a thirty six when it's actually a seventy two because they can't see certain parts of it. Yeah, right. So they're not seeing the green. Yeah, or that's something. right. Um, and and the the next test or the other part of the test is visual field. So we just make sure people's lateral um, vision is good, so that obviously they can see if a Somebody else's truck's about to crash into you. So kind of uh, your peripheral vision. Peripheral vision, yeah. because yeah. they hold their hands That's out. That's right. And I've always their prided myself. I'm like, I've got you there. They're like, you have not. I'm like, I have. <laughs> <laughs> I used to play netball and stuff. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, I was, got uh, yeah. good lateral vision. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And my mum, um, her eyes have started to deteriorate. Yeah. And she said, I used to have the best peripheral vision. Now yeah. I was like, Ugh. oh, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so with color blindness could you fail from that because colors are very important out there like with your different 
coloured lights on different vehicles and yeah so so again like that's going to depend on the job that you do oh, um, yep. um i would not expect an electrician to have colour blindness for example <laughs> put the what do they exactly. do the red, red wire on the green red and green and blue yeah yeah um uh, so yeah i mean obviously the uh, I, I mean if you have colour blindness then you'd probably have on your on your um Medical and your cobalt medical, the report at the end or the section four would probably say something like um, avoid jobs requiring uh, color vision for safety critical purposes or something along mm. those lines. So as long as it doesn't involve safety, then you can. I mean, a lot of time these are plumbers or you know operators where you're not requiring red and green. I mean, obviously a lot of lights. If it's the typical lights in the um, on the road, you have red at the top, orange in the middle, and green at the bottom. So people know, uh, without being, without seeing the colour, they know which light, whether it's a red or a green light. Mm. Um, but of course, it depends how the lights work in the mine's site. Um, and so, I mean, somebody's colour blinded will be noted on their on their um, cobalt medical, um, and then it's going to be judged depending if if they're going to be safe on site. Right. So it's all, so it's it all, all about back safety. To that. Yeah. yeah. And right. so yep. it depends on yeah. So just because you're colourblind doesn't mean you're going to fail. Mm. It just means you you need to make sure we doing you're doing jobs that aren't going to be putting anybody at risk. Because if someone was colourblind, oh, yeah, my, my brain is processing. <laughs> lateral. Yeah, lateral. Oh, I'm over here outside the square. <laughs> so on night shift. The light vehicles have yellow flashing lights. So if someone was colourblind to yellow, or they colourblind oh, to no, a certain it's, it's colour, red and or green. usually red and green. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, so red, the red green colour blindness is the yeah. is the main one. Uh, uh, the, uh, you know, the other thing is some people have mild. Like, there's not. It's not like you either are colour blind or you're not. Mm. It's there's kind of grades of colour blindness. So you have some people have mild deficiencies where they can read most of the numbers in the book, but they miss a couple. Yeah. Um, and then of course the completely colour blind, uh, red green colour blind kind of can only read about half of them right so yeah. there are some at the beginning that everybody gets yeah uh, and then they start getting mm. a little bit more complicated i guess it's the same with your hearing and your eyesight there's certain degrees because i always look at it like there's the average line yeah. and then they have the gray area around the average yeah, line that's right. as long as you're within that it's like a healthy range weight yeah, for your baby yeah, or right. your even for you yeah, which is yeah. on this list BMI, actually. Yeah. 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 Um, well, just going back to, to obviously um, visual acuity and, and hearing, um, I mean, again, as long as the, the deafness or the poor vision doesn't affect the person's ability to operate whatever they or do whatever that job is that they've got on the front of their form, then they will probably be, say, uh, fit for proposed job. But clearly they're not fit for other jobs. Yeah. Um, and if there's any workplace restrictions that have to be in place, you know, it might be that person has to wear reading glasses or long distance glasses or something like that. Um, so relatively simple stuff. Um, and th m most people that have those problems will know that they have to wear their glasses or know yeah. that they have to wear their hearing aids. Um, yeah. So it's, it's a matter of being uh, having common sense and you're not going to fail because of those things in most instances. Yeah. Um, but yeah, going on to weight. Weight, um, body mass index. Yeah, so um, the, the body mass index scales were actually created um, many years ago and, and um, they're not as accurate as they should be just mm. like the they they were created to try and de develop normal bands and and risk parameters but if you took somebody like Alfie Langer who's short really strong really broad set he'll have a BMI that says that he's obese I don't mm. know what he's like now but when he was a footy <laughs> when he's a footy player and I think you know I have seen him on the on the TV uh, he's always a runner he's yeah, out there just as much going. as That's he right. used to be he's go Alfie go tell him <laughs> Queenslander That's right so like if you got his 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 BMI it'd probably he'd probably be above 30 which means he's a beast mm. um but so there there are the BMI by itself isn't isn't the absolute 
be all and end all. Um, so somebody, and, and I will always comment on the medicals that I do, if somebody has a high BMI, but they're basically very strong muscular, if they work out in the gym, um, they're going to have a high BMI, and I'll just put muscular, muscular frame, yeah. you know, or no obesity, um, no, no, you know, uh, central obesity. And the other, like, the other measurements that are a better indicator for health risk down the track is actually measuring your waist circumference and your hip circumference. So, um, I mean, obviously body mass index or BMI is one thing, but if you have a, a, a waist measurement that is uh, significantly narrower than your hip measurement, then your risk of heart disease or other disease down the track is lower. So, so Alfie Lange said, <laughs> <That's in. laughs> "Suck it in, baby." <laughs> uh, so, some like Alfie Lange when he was fit, obviously will have will have you know a narrower waist than than um, than his bottom, um, but his BMI would have been very high. So. Um, so, I, I mean, don't get too hung up about your BMI if you're strong and fit. But at the end of the day, put the finger into your feel, you know, tuck into the, the, the fat around your tummy. And depending on how big a handful you get, that's the degree of problem you have with your weight. Right. Um, but but, the, but again, that, they won't do that at the Cobalt Medical. No, no, they Grab just, a handful. No, they don't. <laughs> no, no, but they do look at you. They like, notice. They, they, they well, don't need well, to the, grab it. They, they can don't, tell. They can see you. That's <laughs> right. And they're feeling your tummy and they're listening to your heart. So yeah. they, will, they will see. You won't be able to hide your fat. So uh, with the, we slotted straight into BMI, but can you explain what measurements and how, like what, what's the calculation? Oh, for BMI, that they do? sure. Yeah. So BMI is basically um, your height. Um, compared to your weight and it's a cal- calculation um, where they square and it's your height in metres uh, it's your weight divided by your height squared a little bit right. complicated yeah. but um, um, it's uh, fortunately we do it on the computer <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to actually remember what, what, what have we used to do on it. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's it's your a body mass index. So it's 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 a it's a good measure that you know everybody's BMI, if uh, everything else being equal, should be twenty five or below. Okay. From twenty to twenty five is healthy. Under twenty five is too thin. From twenty five to thirty is is overweight. From thirty and above is obese. Above thirty five is is um, morbidly obese. So getting more and more serious. So people with a, um, a a weight of about 120 are going to have a BMI. Sorry, if somebody is about 120 kilos, their BMI is probably going to be about 35. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, obviously, in relation to the cobalt medicals, once your weight gets above 120 kilos, there starts becoming issues with the safety gear because there are ratings for chairs and, uh, you know, truck seats. seats. Um, and they start becoming, they start getting issues about the um, your ability to escape from an overturned truck or, or dealing with emergencies and stuff like that. Mm. Um, however, you, you cannot be failed purely because of your weight, because one doctor was successfully sued for saying just because he was overweight, he was unfit. He didn't say the reasons what that obesity was restricting him from doing so if he'd probably been a little bit more diligent with his paperwork he might have got away with it um but he just said bmi you know 40 uh, unfit um so it's all to do with your ability to do the job and your fitness to do the job it's not about whether you're just fat mm. do you know what i mean yeah it's not yeah. so so if if the doctor had said you know um done some physical tests to say unable to do these exercises or and that, i suppose that's the other thing is you there are a lot of people that are very overweight but extremely strong and fit yeah, I was, you know just, I, mean? I was so, just thinking that. Yeah. So, so the weight itself is not a good is is not an indicator at all about your fitness level or your strength, because some people who are scrawny and thin are exceptionally weak and pathetic, um, and unfit and couldn't run 300 meters mm. but you have you know um and and i have some very close friends who have very high um bmis but they cycle for you know you know an hour or two three or four times a week and they've you know swim three kilometers and very fit mm. you know so it's not don't think your bmi is a reflection of your fitness it's not it's just your weight compared to your height yeah we've over the years i've worked with a few people mostly guys that have um 
very overweight. Yeah. Come close to the digger yeah. drivers. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to be able to go on that digger, mate. You're hitting the limit of the seed, and uh-huh. then there's a bit. So then they have to go and have a yeah. test and stuff. Yeah. But oh, and or they just have to go and update their Cobalt Medical, yeah. and we kind of think, oh, yeah. this isn't going to. They won't be back. Yeah, pass. Uh-huh. What? You know, uh-huh. but like you say, they're fit. They're yeah, strong enough. That's right. You know, if you're that's passing right. everything else, and yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's something to be aware of yeah. for everyone out there listening yeah. who has yet to have done <laughs> one. I mean, I mean, just not only for your not only for your cobalt medical and your ability to work. Um, for your general health, you should. If your weight's climbing towards those safety limits, you really should be seriously looking at your diet and your exercise. And usually, it's a bad habit. Um, unfortunately, out at the mines, there's been great studies done. The food is freely available. It's highly unhealthy. Chips and and I've eaten there too. You know, yeah. you can you know, find good choices. You, you can, though. you can, yeah. but it's so tempting. Huh? Yeah, there's potato no. bake and there's chips and there's gravy. Eggs and there's, four ways that's drink right. for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, lovely, you know, mushroom sauces and oh my goodness. Um, so yeah, but you've got it. You've really got to uh, like. Often you can lose the weight very effectively by cutting out simple things like lemonades, sweet drinks. Beer, unfortunately, is a is a, is on, a high doctor. calorie. That's I it. know that's that's why I drink I'm wine. Out of here. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's why you drink wine. I yeah. thought wine was uh, wine's got a lot of calories too, but it's much much smaller volume. Oh well, yeah. yeah. So overall, you're taking in less. In theory, <laughs> if, if you drink heaps of wine, well, you you're, you're, you're worse. Up. That's so right. You, see, mid strength beer though, like a Forex Gold or Carlton Mid, they but it's mid alcohol, not. Yeah, right. that's the alcohol. So you've really got to get. You look at the uh, sugar con. Uh, look at the. It's not sugar. Look at the um, the carbohydrate content in your beers, and there are some low calorie beers. Yes. So get the low calorie beers where the um, where the sugar in the hops or the yeast or whatever it is that brews um, uh, is all um, changed into alcohol. So instead of having the four percent alcohol with a whole heap of sugar all the sugar has been metabolized you still have four percent alcohol but you have very little sugar yeah. so um so the, yeah there are healthier beers if you're trying to lose the weight thank you <laughs> <laughs> i'll stay <laughs> so keep drinking but- <laughs> yeah, yeah. i'll have a sip of my water now jeez um i guess on this list here that i come up with there's only a couple of things we haven't really kind of um, touched on is checking your flexibility and your reflexes. Yeah, you sit yeah. up on the bed and get the old yeah, hammer on your knee. Yeah. Oh my god, I always love that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, look, I mean, what we're checking for there is is basically for the reflexes, basically that the nerves all work okay. Um, flexibility. I mean, mainly, you know, we need to uh, make sure that there's no joint damage, so if all the joints are working adequately. It's a very superficial test that's done. Mm commonly so you know we're only doing range of movement we're not doing repetitive movements we test i mean obviously in the shoulders the biggest problem with shoulders are the rotator cuff injuries tendonitis and or torn um tendons in the shoulder so you know the simple raising your arms up and down and holding them in certain positions that are testing the rotator cuff is probably should have been done um um, and of course the duck walk for knee strength (laughs) Um, but but also the back like we do do you know neck full range of movements but it's only seeing making sure you can move your neck yeah it's not a workout no it's not at all and moving and it's also not testing the strength of the muscles in your back Right. You know, it's only range of movement. So it's a very simple test, in fact. Yeah. I mean, the, there's some doubt about how affected it is as a, as a fitness for work test, but that's the way it is. And, and that's why. And it's complicated a lot of companies, enough already. <laughs> you don't need another 10 pages, that's Doctor. Right. <laughs> um, and I guess that's why a lot of companies, okay, do the you've got your section for your cobalt that's medical. Right. Now, now go and do your functional. AF. F-A- FCA? FCA. Yep. Yeah. Functional capacity, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and and I mean, that is where you'll be expected to do repetitive stepping or repetitive bending or lifting of weights, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So that is a much more practical test, which, um, which at the end of the day, depending on the quality of the test itself, uh, might be relevant or maybe completely irrelevant. Mm. Um, often they just have a test and it's done for everybody, which with, with no correlation yeah. to the job that they do. So that's a bit stupid. Yeah. 
It is. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not sure if you – oh, if you fail – um, oh, we, drug tests we haven't done either. Yeah. If if you fail your cold board medical, can you just go and try again straight away or do you have to wait in a certain time? Like if you fail your driver's licence test, you have to wait or – and I know drug um, tests, there's a time you have to oh, wait Oh, look, as I, well. mean, I mean, drug testing is easy – well, not easy, but, I mean, obviously you just need to delay – Get the drugs out. Get the drugs out of your system. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and obviously – I'm sure everybody will know it's it's cannabis that is the longest duration drug that's commonly comes up positive because cannabis can stay in your system for about two weeks. So if you're mm-hmm. going to go for a cold board medical or going to get a drug test before going out to work, yes, just don't do it for a while, guys. You know, just you know, it's not worth it. You just get a bad name and you got to do the test again. It's going to cost you more money. Yeah, and so, you know, if you fail, well, that might have cost you that job. That's right. It and probably has. Yeah, 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 that's right. Um, sorry, the other question was. Uh, if you fail, can you try again? Okay, yeah, yeah. So um, um, obviously if you do fail, there'll probably be a reason for it. So whatever that reason you should try and – I mean obviously if if the reason's still there, you're going to fail again. But if it's something that you can improve or change or yeah. you fail because you're just recovering from a broken arm um, – I mean, they'd be a little bit cruel to fail you mm. for something that's a temporary condition. Um, well, I know someone who had to go for one after night shift and uh, passed but was freaking out because they were just so tired and uh, the blood yeah. pressure was up yeah. because he hadn't had much sleep and so it became an issue with his blood pressure and he hadn't had his tablets. And, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, look, I mean, I, mean I, I suppose just to mention a few sort of like you bring up blood pressure, but also diabetes. Mm-hmm. If you have diabetes, the most important thing to protect your job and your cold board medical is to look after your diabetes. D- get the test done regularly. Um, even if your diabetes control is not good, if you haven't done the test, you're not going to get through the co- – you know, you're, you're going to be put on your, – your, the doctor's not going to be happy to pass you without all the diabetic tests in place in a, in, in a recent time frame. So – and if you are diabetic, they're going to be wanting those tests repeated every year to make sure your overall control is good. For blood pressure, again, if your blood pressure is out of control um, – then sure, the GP, go back to your GP, get it treated. It'll come down within a, a week or two, mm-hmm. and then you can uh, get your cold board medical redone. Or, uh, I mean, an, um, a more generous understanding doctor doing the first cold board would just say, well, go and get your blood. We'll just give you a temporary cold board medical, get your blood pressure checked, and in three months I want to see the, that the, it's been controlled, and you give us that report. Right. And then you just sign it off and say, well, it's under control now, so everything's good. Yeah. So like with waiting for the chest x Yeah, to exactly. Come back. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. you obviously would still – deem him fit enough anyway yeah that's yeah, right not a, not a risk yeah, yeah yeah that's right obviously i mean as mm. long as it's it's in the safe <laughs> range you go, mate. Be right. <laughs> yeah so i yeah. mean it's a matter of like a lot of i mean for example um certain things certain like i mean like a slightly elevated blood pressure isn't going to cause a problem in except for five ten or twenty years you know that's going to cause a heart attack or a stroke a long time ahead. So a blood pressure that's sitting at, you know, 95 or even 100 over, you know, as the bottom reading, or say 150 over, say 95, it's outside the normal range. And if it's 100, it definitely needs to be treated. Um, but that person also, I mean, the trouble with blood pressure is you get stressed doing a cold board medical. Mm, so that it's stress. Up, up that's goes, right, yeah, that's yeah. right. But we try to overcome that by doing, getting the person to lie down and relax and doing it a few times um, afterwards. Otherwise, you know, we get the GP to check it a few times and then if they need to treat it, they go on medication. Yeah. Um, often people will have high blood pressure persistently through the cold board medical and then have a normal blood pressure done by their GP or by, you know, in other places. Um, so, and that's fine. Mm. They can then sh- give those reports back to the cold board doctor to say, here's my blood pressure, everything's good. Because no one likes tests of any type. No, well, I no. guess there's some people that do. I don't know. They might get off on it or something because <laughs> they know they're going to pass. No, that's <laughs> I right. I don't know. It's, yeah, I've always no, no. hated being Everybody, tested on I mean, anything. It's like going to see the... Uh, like going to see the headmaster yes. or, or going to the dentist, you, your blood pressure goes up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So with the drug test, you're just urine? Yeah. Um, no swab? 
Uh, not routinely. No, um, re- yeah. pr- full urine. So you want the lines to come up, or you don't want? Yeah, the that's lines, right. So, I can never so yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, again, it probably depends. I mean, the test that we have, you have a line if yep. it's if if it's clear, um, and there's no line if the drugs are present. Right. Yeah. So you do want I've, the lines to come up. Yeah. Um, but I mean, usually, um, you know, the the person will produce a specimen into the bottle, um, and and the the person takes a cup away and and then they read the test the the um the coal worker uh, coal worker doesn't actually see those lines usually yeah. oh there. i've stood there oh you've they've done I've it in front of you i've stood there a lot just like wait am, are we pregnant <laughs> <laughs> i was talking to someone just a couple of days ago actually and he had a test and the line was where's, uh, the, dodgy? Blo- where's yeah. the bloody line you uh-huh. know and he said if if you think that you should be clear and a line isn't showing up or it's really faint, some of the tests, can the glare in the room can affect it. So you said make sure they get a bit of a cup around it. There oh, yeah. might be some faint <laughs> line there. I said, I must remember yeah, that. That's, yeah, a, that's a good yeah. tip. I, I mean, that any, was a proper test of Adam site that told yeah, him that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. they've had some yeah. and they're like, oh, hang on a minute. No, on this angle, it's yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And you only need to have a very weak line. Yeah. Um, and I mean, the other thing is um, just because something shows up pos- uh, non negative, it's not a positive test, mm. um, then the, 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 a more detailed test is done with, um, uh, the la- at the lab. Yeah. So, um, you know, if you know you're clean, you're going to be clean. So don't worry about That's it. That's right. Um, um, but there are like over the counter drugs that you've got to be real cautious about. And, and if you have taken anything that you think might, if you've taken anything, just tell the exam, the, the, the tester, you know, I had some cough and cold tablets, you know, I had diarrhea and vomiting and I was taking these things, um, you know, or I had a cough and I was taking this cough suppressant because some cough suppressants mm. have codeine in them, or maybe not anymore. Um, but anyway, yeah, there are codeine based cough suppressants um, that will show up on a drug test. That's so right, but if you've declared if, if it... If you've said no, yeah. I haven't... So it's in your interest to say, yes, I, I had a cough or a cold and I was taking some drug, can't remember what it was. Mm. Just say it because depending on what shows up, if something shows up on the test, if nothing shows up, everything's good and they don't care anyway. Um, and it's okay to take over-the-counter drugs, medications. Those. And then, well, no one's side, say if you have an incident, you have to go and have a drug test straight away, that's it. Yeah. Um, and if something shows up... And you say, yeah, but I, I told you that it was this. Yeah. Usually you still have to go home and wait for those so tests to come to back pure. to say that, right. oh, yeah, you're right, that's what yeah. it is. And they're like, well, I've got a couple of days, you know, <laughs> with or with pay. Depends uh, who you uh, work for, if you contract or not. Yeah. 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 So um, I thought of something else then about that. Uh, oh, one of the questions someone asked me in there was, do you have to have – I think we touched on this right at the start and we were yeah. mucking around, but – do you, you have to have blood tests? Are there any needles involved when you go for your, when you go for your sexual? Board? We have these huge. Oh my God. <laughs> no, um, no, no blood tests um, for oh. a routine, a normal um, uh, cobalt medical. The the only time that blood tests would be needed, but it's not in the cobalt part. It's really if somebody has a condition like diabetes, I mentioned the the regular tests uh, for the for the level of control of to prove satisfactory diabetes control that will be required do involve blood tests but that would be done by a gp hopefully yes. okay which is another great tip yeah, make sure so, you go and do that yeah so get, if they haven't would the doctor at the cobble medical do it or no, just say no you no, go off that's and- right you the the everybody's got to understand that the the doctor doing your cobble medical cannot be your treating it's doctor not your doctor yeah. okay so oh, he can't be Shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. Oh, um, as so, conflict so, of interest, sort of. Well, I mean, you're doing the coal board. So in that, well, in that, in that instance, like, um, so you being you're doing a coal board medical. So in as part of that coal board medical, I, I shouldn't be checking your diabetes, but mm. you can come and see me tomorrow. And I'll check your diabetes, but I mean, we try to we try to keep it slightly separate yeah. because there there is a conflict of interest. Yeah. Because if if you're coming to see me about your diabetes, then I'm as the as the treating GP, I would then be in a 
conflicted position if your mm. diabetes isn't very good. Because it's meant to be independent. Yeah, that's right. Um, so yeah, assessment. That's right. Yeah. So yeah, usually the um, the cobalt medical doctor will send you back to your own doctor to have all those tests done, and they control your conditions. And the the cobalt doctor then signs you off, right? Saying yes, everything's fine. Yeah. With diabetes, a little bit more complicated because um, in some situations you're going to need you may need a, a referral to a specialist if especially if it's unfortunately insulin dependent diabetes and you're a heavy goods vehicle driver things like that Mm. it's a little bit more complicated so sometimes you end up having to see a specialist and of course talking about seeing specialists if you have those um, a problem with your lungs and and now there's like very clear guidelines for us it's a um, it's I was going to say a real pain, uh, but there's no flexibility for us as as the treating doctors. Now, if a person's breathing tests are below a certain level, we have to send them to a respiratory specialist, mm. even if we know what the problem is. Mm. Here, this person has asthma, but the tests are below the seventy percent mark. I am obligated to get that person to see a respiratory specialist. Mm. Now, how many respiratory specialists do we have in Mackay? Zippo. Uh, you know, but, feel, but, no? but they travel. I mean, there yeah. are visiting oh, respiratory. Visiting yeah. And, yeah. So, you know, and it's not, qu- it's not quick to get into see a respiratory specialist. So, you know, you have to wait a month to see somebody. And you're trying to get your cobalt medical to get a job. You've got that job. That's right. Or you've got that job. Because that's something else I want to ask, and then we'll start wrapping up, yeah. is they've changed the laws. I don't know how much you know about this, and I'm kind of on the fringe of it, about just being signed off by your doctor now and being allowed to go in the mines, you have to have a job first. Do you okay. know what those changes are? Okay. If you don't, it's fine. I can no. just edit this no, bit no. out. So, so, yeah, it's, it's the law states that the company employing the coal worker should pay for the coal board medical. So that is the law. Because companies are trying to make profits and trying to save themselves money, what they have historically said to their uh, potential employees is if you apply for a job with us, you have to have done a cobalt medical before you apply for the job. And that way they were trying to avoid being responsible for paying for that cobalt medical. That's actually a touch illegal. Mm. But they were getting away with it because it's a bit of a grey area. So um, uh, cobalt medicals are required to be paid for by the employer of that person. So if it's if the people are employed by the mines, it's the mine. If they sub, if they're contractors, it's the contracting company. If they run their own business, so if if I'm a, an electrician that's working for myself, then I've got to pay for it myself because I'm in my own company. Yeah. But the company should be paying not the worker. And that's a, a, a bone of contention that I'm sure the unions uh, have been, been fighting, for, fighting for for a long time. Mm. And, and it's a manipulation and an evasion of the, the stated law, mm. um, which you should – the coal board medicals are meant to be paid for by the employer. Yeah. So uh-huh. we are – I mean, I think that – what that is one of the things that is trying to be tightened up it's always been the law but people have been getting away with it yeah because people just want to get a job and that's right yeah look and it looks better on your resume and i say get your cobalt medical get your standard 11 and they only last a certain amount of time anyway six months i think they're gonna get signed off but yeah i'm still trying to look into it properly but i believe a lot of other things have recently changed about that if you haven't got a job, you can't just go in and get one yourself. Cobble now. medical, yeah. So I mean, I mean, again, this is just tightening up the rules that yeah. that were to make pre- the companies pay. That's right, yeah. and also like, um, um, so technically. When somebody does a cobalt medical, the company is meant to s- fill in section one. Yes. Uh, section one. The patient or the, impl- the coal worker fills in section two. The examiner fills in section three. And the sign off doctor AMA signs off section four. So if people don't have a job, technically they can't have section one filled out. And exactly. technically the, the doctor can't say, is he foot? Because, well, what's the job? We don't know what the job is. So how can I say he's fit for a job when I don't know what the job is? And he can't sign off on something if it's not all filled That's out. That's right. So therefore you need yeah. that. Yeah. So, and, and, and the Department of Mines is tightening up that mm. all the time. It's always been illegal to, to do it without a job. But people have just 
worked around it because of the pressure from the companies that are mm. trying to get away with not paying for the cardboard medicals. Bloody companies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Dr. John. Is no, there okay. anything else you think that we haven't covered when it comes to medicals that you want to say, or about anything on that side of things that you want to talk about? Um, Cover what was on my list and more. Yeah, no, no. I mean, I think, I mean, cobalt medicals are um, just such a more painful process than they were before. It's it's frustrating and it's sad. It's been brought in for a reason. There are still deficiencies with the system, with the with the cobalt medical itself and the processes leading up to it. But they are trying to tighten up the loopholes, and they're getting so much stricter with all the requirements. They're being stricter on the doctors, and they're being stricter with the companies. So we are hoping that the systems will get better, and it'll protect the workers. And of course, for people over in WA and stuff, we're talking Queensland. That's right, that's right. <laughs> yes. Um, and the other thing that I, I would also like to say is I have known that many people over the years, bloody hell, got to go and have a medical, oh, whoops, they find something. That's right. There's a little bit of something in the yeah, urine, there's a this, there's right. a that. They go in, have a quick procedure. If that had have been left for years, it could have killed them. That's right. You know? Yeah. So it can be a really great way to enforce a checkup. Yeah, yeah, that, people, that's right. Well, it is. Well, that's people right. People just will not bloody go to the doctor. That's I'm talking right. to uh, mostly you lot, you men. <laughs> <laughs> well, because because women come and get the pill every, usually, you know, every uh, 12 months, um, they, they, they are in front of a doctor and the doctor is checking the blood pressure and doing a, a, a variety of health checks. Men don't turn up unless they're actually sick, so we'll mm, often not dying. see a man. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll often not see a man for many years. Now, one of the I mean, I didn't really go into it, but we, when part of the Colbert Medical is to do a urine s- test, which yep. obviously partly for drugs, but also we test it for blood and protein and sugar predominantly. Right. We do get a number of people coming up with either blood or protein, yeah. and then those things have to be investigated. Now, 19 times out of 20, whatever's causing the blood or the protein usually does not affect their fitness to work. But there's something else going on that um, uh, is causing that problem, which may need to be treated separately. But mm. their physical fitness is very seldom affected by um, by those kind of problems. So sometimes it might be, you know, a, a kidney stones or or a, um, um, a diabetes uh, or, or simple polyps in the bladder. But like you say, sometimes it is investigated and they find early bladder cancer or something mm. like that um, and it's treated successfully and, um, and and so yeah this is a good health check so look at it in a positive way especially if you don't have to pay for it <laughs> <laughs> I love it of course Dr John ending on a positive note <laughs> now for a word from our sponsor Julia Hartman and the Bantax Accounting Group Julia's my awesome accountant. She's written two books with financial expert Noel Whitaker, and she's got a passion to help us miners make the most out of our hard-earned cash. She's got heaps of tips and makes sure that we get every cent we are meant to get and is right on the ball with everything. If you head to bantax.com.au forward slash miners, that's B-A-N-T-A-C-S, You can download a free booklet, all just for us miners. And there's also a spreadsheet in there that helps you check off what tools you have for your trade, like your isolation lock, work boots, seven shirts, all of these sorts of things. And you can weigh them up and it'll tell you if you qualify weight-wise to claim your trips out to work. And that's just one of the things that they've got over there. So I strongly urge you to head to bantax.com.au forward slash miners and see what they can do and find your nearest office as we come up to tax time. They're really on the ball, know what's going on with the tax department and there's heaps of other free information like property investing. If you really plan on doing some great things with your money, you want to do that, right? If you want to sell your house, you can save a lot of money if you find out what to do first rather than in hindsight. And Julia, she'll, you know, make sure you get it right. And if you do it wrong, 
and then go and see her, she'll <laughs> she'll up you <laughs> in the nicest possible way because she really cares about us and wants us to keep our money and not give it to the tax department. Anyway, head over to bantax.com.au forward slash miners and tell them Mad Mumsy sent you. Um, speaking of positive notes, <laughs> what is your special place, Dr. John, when life turns to crap? Uh, you, or you just, I know how busy you guys are. Yeah. You know, do you take time out for just you, John? Yeah, the, the sea. What do you I mean, do? I mean, for me, when I need to de-stress and defrag, I go to the sea in some form or another. If if I'm not able to get out on the boat, it'll be the beach. Um, we live close. We can we look out over the water. Uh, we can walk down to the water, and I'll go for a walk along the beach at sunset. Um, but ideally, obviously, I'd much rather be on the back of my boat <laughs> on a little island, whether it be, you know, Brampton, St. Bees, Keswick um, or Hill Inlet or, you know, um, and and sitting on the back of the boat. Um, and we've got a catamaran so we can sit on the sand when the tide goes out. Oh, so really? so we can sit completely protected in very shallow water. And it's just magic. Mm. And actually, it's interesting because um, um a few years ago when when I, I was having some personal issues, let's just call them that, um, I could sail out of the Mackay Harbour and I could feel all the stress just leaving behind. It was just such an incredible feeling that that um, – just just going out onto the water and, and just relaxing because you leave behind – I mean, you can still get mobile reception, but you can turn the phone off. Uh, <laughs> but it's just, that, it's just that process of going out, getting in touch with nature, feeling the wind, seeing the sun, watching the stars at night, and sitting on the back of the boat. So, yeah, it's um, – Love it. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, for me, it's the sea. I've had the, that feeling of just releasing everything I have in – Many ways. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, all those things you described without the boat. <laughs> um, I built the boat, by the way. Pardon? I spent three and a half to four years building the boat. So I built the oh, boat you myself. Built it. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> so that late, would have been late. so rewarding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so um, it's kind of one of those things that you put the hard work in and you get the rewards. Yeah, so, oh, so, good on so, you. Yeah, so yeah. extra bonus for sitting out in the back of the boat. <laughs> and that would have been your little happy place as well when you were building. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, 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 when the times were getting tough doing the building of the boat and you think, oh, my God, like six months, there was six months straight of sanding, mm. just sanding to get the... I the, hope you had good... Mass. Well, I, I, I did. I'm not sure if I changed the filters often enough in, in retrospect now. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, um, right. But yeah. no, no, we, I was always I was wearing masks for the, the dust. Um, but yeah, I mean, I had to focus to keep myself going through that. I knew so many people half built boats and never quite day. finished. And I thought, I'm not going to, that's not going to be me. I'm going to keep going. So I, I imagined being on the boat with, with near the beach. Uh, with the tropical, you know, the uh, um, coconut palms, you know, crystal clear water, turquoise and waves lapping on the beach as I'm sitting on the back of the boat. So I actually Im- had a very clear visual that kept me going through the dust and the sweat and, and the fiberglass oh, kind of n- so nipping into good. all your skin. Oh, that's good. A lot of people can relate to yeah. that. A lot of people with boats, yeah. lots of miners with boats. Yeah. I was going to say I've had that feeling of it just... And a lot Washing of my away. listeners will have that. Wherever you work, there'll be a certain point on the way home where you oh, just let leave it go. Yeah. all that last yeah. week behind, the last yeah. four weeks, yeah. whatever your roster is. Yeah. And mine was coming over the Eaton Range. Oh, yeah. And when you start going down the hill, well, I never quite got it when it was pouring with rain. It's like, just concentrate, don't you? Yeah, yeah. You know, you're in a manual V8 yeah. going down <laughs> there and, oh, are my tyres all right? No, so. um, and now – because they're doing so much roadworks there, you can see clear to the ocean. Uh, it's just uh, just that feeling. So it is. It's nice. Yeah, it? have somewhere on your way home where yeah. you can just let it all go yeah. Yeah. and then go and do the good and, bits. And, and, I mean, the other thing I'd just like to point out to everybody, because this is really important, is you can relax anywhere. Yes. You know, you can relax in the crib room if you just shut your eyes and imagine your, what do you call it? Fancy place? What do you call it? Happy place. Happy place. <laughs> so, so, um, and it's a really important 
strategy to have is is to to practice visualizing where you want to be so that wherever you are in the world you can close your eyes and you can take yourself out of your current reality put yourself into your perfect happy place and 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 your body has all the benefits as if you're physically there Okay, so and and uh, on the Tough Minds app, there yes. are some guided meditations yes. which will actually help you do that. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's a really important way to relax because obviously, as I said, we probably get out on uh, for a good weekend on the boat about once a month, once every three weeks. I try to get out every two weeks, but um, depends on what's happening in, in life. But at any time, I can close my eyes and and. Imagine I'm on the back of the boat. Yeah, that's beautiful. And it's a great tip. And I yeah. I say that in oh, some of my earlier episodes, I think, about taking visual things with yeah. you yeah. to your sterile room where they all yeah. look the same. You know, yeah. put your little picture up on the mirror yeah. of your boat or your Harley or whatever it is. Yeah. Your, what is your why? Why are yeah. you there? Why are you that's away? Right. Why are you doing this crap Focus job on you the, don't want to be in? That's right. How Focus on you what get you're getting. It? That's yeah. right. Focus on what it's doing for you and where mm. it's taking you. Yeah. Um, th- I mean, obviously, I'm a. The other thing I was just going to mention, because I'm a visual person, so mm. my my happy place is very visual. Um, but for people that are auditory, they might want to be focusing on the sounds that they're hearing, the 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 um, the wind in the um, in the coconut palms, and the waves lapping on the beach, and um, the gentle and it's, if people mm. who are kinesthetic smells, smells and um, people who are kinesthetic will be what will be more in touch with the feelings, like what does it feel to lie on the sand so you feel the sand on your back and you feel the cool wind on your hair on your skin and the 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 wind rustling your hair and stuff like that so depending on what works for you like if you're visual uh, auditory or kinesthetic just create your happy place and whatever really connects with your own psyche and go there often very in often. your mind, yeah, it's, so that it's, when you are in the middle of a bad time, you're like, hang on, you know, you don't want to. That's that's right. You know, take it, yourself it's out hard of that. to get that's right from there to there yeah. instantly like that yeah. if you haven't practiced yeah. it. Yeah. You know, I find on the bus on the way home from work was a good one. You know, we had a thirty forty minute drive, oh, and yeah. then. Yeah. You're away, you know, you tune out because everyone's wah, 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 wah. <laughs> or sometimes it's really quiet because uh-huh. everyone's just tired uh-huh. or everyone's on their phone. Yeah. Um, and that was my chill out, look at the sky, look at the storm in yeah. the distance. Yeah. And then because in half an hour you've all got to get back together and go and have tea at the mess and listen, <laughs> move more dirt. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah it, it, it's important to do that. And you mentioned the tough Minds app. Then, yeah, that's. Yeah. Uh, would you like to share? Yeah. That? So, so, why did you do? Why did you start it? Um, we started because we saw this huge gap um, in in both um, access to services, mental health services, uh, but also we saw this huge, complete actually complete absence of of strategies for people to think positively um everybody knows you know since napoleon hill's day in the 1930s when he wrote think and grow rich um um everybody knows you need to be positive but nobody actually taught people well how do you be positive because we found even very educated professional people were had these ongoing negative thoughts that were constantly interfering with their ability to either function or be happy or the way they interacted with other people so we we realized elizabeth and myself she was coming at it from more the counseling and spiritual perspective and i was coming at it from the the medical perspective because these negative thoughts end up as causing heart attack strokes depression anxiety etc etc so it was really important that these things were addressed and just saying to somebody you got to think positively well yeah how do you do that you know so we we developed this process where you recognize your negative thoughts and and a three step process to to kill them and get rid of them and replace them with positive alternatives um, and the reason this is so different from everything else that's out there is that traditional counseling which is the most common one is CBT or cognitive behavior therapy bas- predominantly says teaches people to not be affected by their thoughts or any negative thoughts that they're having. We actually take it a step further than that and say, no, 
don't accept that negative thought in the first place. Just get rid of it. Um, and so mm-hmm. this, uh, we, the last lot of research we've done, um, just so this is so successful. Uh, we have improvements in depression, anxiety, and stress by between thirty and fifty-four percent. This is after only watching the, the video modules once, you know. Over and there's, you know, there's about, um, well, there's four main ones about positive thinking, but this was the, um, you know, there was other ones about, you know, pos- you know, positive communication, relationships, and being a class act, and a few, you know, positive behavioural things. Um, but so these, these, and it was done in workplaces too, which was was really good because the people that did the training had these phenomenal improvements better than drugs better than the medications we use for treating these conditions mm. you know and and the improvements after watching the videos to begin with was about somewhere between 15 and 30 percent so we were really happy with that we went back eight months later and without any further intervention at all, these people had increased to 30 to 55, 54%. Yeah. So because they were practicing these processes, they were not letting the, the negatives in their own head interfere with them. And they also weren't letting negatives uh, that other people were trying to put on them affect them. So it gave them such a, uh, mental resilience was increased by about 30% as well. Mm. So this is just phenomenal. Um, and it saves lives. And I mean, it's just, I mean, we're really happy about how effective it, we, I mean, I shouldn't say this, but I'm, I'm, I'm didn't, I wouldn't have even thought that it was possible to have such big changes in those, in those numbers, mm. um, just from, a um, a, a process that is essentially, um, uh, inside your own head. Um, but if you fix up the thoughts inside your own head, you will feel better. You'll have happiness. You'll relate better to your partner. Your life will get better. You will have success. You'll see solutions where you previously couldn't see solutions because it opens your mind. You, you, if there's a problem, you deal with the problem. You don't attack the person. There's just it changes relationships. It uh, improves kids. So if people are struggling with their kids, go through the Tough Minds modules on the free app. And you will get ideas about how to handle your kids positively without having that conflict. Um, mm. I mean, I'm getting older now, which is which is wonderful that I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so we've been through the anarchistic teenagers. You know, they'll be in your face and you know be you know nothing, and why everybody else's parents, you know, and and these processes basically, you know, you just r- react with in situations like it completely differently and allow them to say whatever their piece is and then you focus on the problem. So, okay, the problem here seems to be this. Okay, let's talk about the problem. Stop attacking each other. You know, I mean, you, you, you deal with things in such a, an easier way and it improves uh, in workplaces. It improves all parameters like atmosphere, communication, trust, etc. by between 15 and, 20, uh, 15 and 30%. As well, so and this is again only from watching these few modules on the app. So, and people in mining, we have to deal with our crew, yeah, all the time, yeah. And you don't all get along, and no. there's different opinions and different moods and different yeah. everything, yeah, you know, different days, different hour. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? You're all right, last time I saw you, yeah. And so, again, like we were talking about, just with your control of intake of dust yeah. by what you do if you start thinking about how you're uh, how you are on the inside it changes everything it does it, it does. really does yeah. it changes your whole outlook yeah. on everything yeah. what you st- what made you want to just change crews you know I, I did that one a few years ago and like no nah, i just can't deal with that it was a couple i couldn't yeah. deal with them anymore they were really doing my head in and um I wanted to change crews or leave or something. And then I read something about, you know, embrace your enemy. (laughs) It was one of those, it was basically letting it go. Yeah. That's what it was. You know, it's not about them, it's about me. Get back to me in my head. Yeah. And they left. (laughs) (laughs) Look at that. Thank you, angels. That worked really well. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. But in between, I did talk to them and we were fine before they left. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, thing. the the once you change your um, 
the way you process information, you stop letting it bother you. Yeah. And, and then you can f- – and you focus on the problem, not on the people. And, and if the problem is that the job's not being done properly – you make sure the job's done properly, but it's not about, well, you're just a lazy whatever or <laughs> – do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so you focus on the problem that needs to be fixed. You don't have to like everybody. And mm-hmm. I'd actually put a challenge out to all the people out of the mines within each of your working groups – share the app with each other and see how much better it feels and how much better people talk to each other once you've fixed up your own negative thoughts and, and mm. cleaned up your own mind and, and start communicating positively because the responses you get from the other people just changes astronomically it just does. by changing the way you approach the other person. If, as soon as you start caring for the other person and wanting to help that other person, they'll stop being horrible back to you mm. because you're on the same team yeah you know what I mean? Absolutely. so um it just works so well and and obviously within workplaces you can't choose who you're with generally speaking mm. um but i must say one of our fundamental starting points is if i'm at work for eight hours like i'm, at, I'm not a 12-hour worker like you guys <laughs> uh, but if i'm at 13, work <laughs> <laughs> actually i probably do do 13 yeah, you, but probably, no. you never stop <laughs> um but uh, if i'm at work eight hours a day and i'm at home and i'm asleep eight hours a day half of my wake life is in the workplace so i want my workplace to be great you guys are all in teams so share the app the tough minds app and watch those key modules in life mastery on the app which will teach you to recognize your negative thoughts and teach you to um, behave with class act and uh, positive communication and so you can talk through problems without getting upset about with each other or at each other Mm. and and i would like to guarantee and full money back guarantee because it's a free <laughs> <laughs> ah, <awesome>. full, <laughs> full money back guarantee if if your if your work group isn't dramatically improved we would expect to see 25 to 30 percent improvement in your in, in your interactions with each other and your trust it's just amazing you, without even uh, the the research and the businesses improved their role clarity we didn't talk about role clarity at all but we just got people talking effectively Mm. and suddenly they everything became clearer yeah in the workplace it was amazing i love it (laughs) and for those of you who are looking in your favorite app store as we speak going well i can't bloody find it (laughs) it's because it's spelled Uh t-u-f-m-i-n-d-s yeah tough so so tough the t-u-f stands for think positively Understand because knowledge is power and flourish and thrive. So by thinking positively, you have the knowledge so you thrive. And that's really the whole aim with the Tough Minds app. Of course, within the app, there's also all the stuff about suicide awareness and recognition, um, which is kind of the sharp pointy end. But the app is for everybody. The app improves all people's um, thought processes, their uh, resilience. um, And if they are dealing with stress or anxiety, it has really effect and insomnia. We to date haven't had anybody get through the insomnia module and stayed awake. I know. Okay. I love going to sleep with Elizabeth. <laughs> Elizabeth. <laughs> A lot of men like oh, going to sleep with her. <laughs> I have meditation naps. Oh, not nap, but I've got a couple of meditations yeah, in my courses. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, a couple of people said, oh, and my partner's like, why do you mean people are going to sleep with you? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it's really good and I highly recommend it. And you also now have a podcast. It's yep. in the very early stages. It so is. big things coming with that so yeah. i know a lot of people in the minds we love to download Listen. our podcasts oh, yeah. while we're on break yeah. put them on a usb stick night shift stick them in oh, yeah. and you can change your life oh, by listening to, to we'll dr john have <laughs> to keep telling your podcasts are good i did help them with their yeah, setup did, guys we're so, very appreciative yeah. so the only reason we have a podcast is because of you leanne so <laughs> thank you very much for that that's all right and it, that is called because I couldn't find that, but it's Tough Talks. Tough Talks, that's it's right. It's not Tough Minds because yeah. a lot of that is taken from your live. Live webinars, fa- that's yeah, right, Facebook yeah, webinars. Yeah, on your so. Facebook and that's on the page there. But I'll leave a link to everything that you do yeah, yeah. with the Tough Minds. Yeah, There's also quite a lot of um, YouTube uh, videos on YouTube under Tough Minds too. So yeah. um, a lot of our uh, Facebook webinars are there. And we're actually doing some really exciting um, modules for um, anxiety relationships 
relationships and obviously life mastery. Um, so, and also business specific modules for the business too. And we're going to be certifying people to mainly for um, either people that want to train others. So like as in tough minds coaches or tough or health and safety officers um, so that um, they can be certified as a, as a, um, a coach, as a trainer uh, for positive mindfulness cognition, mm. which is the positive mindset uh, processes. That is very exciting, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. How it's all come from that. Yeah, that's Just right. You guys being so positive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll leave all the links to okay. everything uh, in the show notes, which for this episode will be found at madmumsy.com forward slash beers 65. If anyone wants to get in touch with you, Dr. John, drop me a line. What's the best way for them? Or you're just too yeah. busy. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, well, probably, I mean, the toughminds.com, the website is probably the best place. If it's, I mean, we are on Facebook as well under Tough Minds. So there's always somebody that's watching that if you want advice about the, um, the app. We don't, that's not a, a, an access for counseling, though. We don't have medical personnel manning the mm. Tough Minds uh, pages, although we have actually helped people out in distress when they couldn't find help elsewhere. But it's more for the information about the app or if we can help with general information. So, yeah, the website, YouTube, and obviously any of our clinics. If people do need help, any of the super clinics in Mackay are uh, obviously, we have walk in services, we specialize in mental health, especially at City Super Clinic. Which uh, is out by the uni. Not Central, by the airport, that's right. <laughs> which is where I went. Central Wrong Queens, end yeah. of Boundary Road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, over the road from uh, uh, Central Queensland University and where the ARC, the Aquatic and Recreational, the new the pool. The Mark Mackay Aquatic Recreation Centre. Cool. I go oh, there that's, quite regularly. All right, Mark, that's a nice yes. name. That's easy to say, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, Mark with a C. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, well, I suppose we better wrap up. I've taken a lot of your time, Dr. John. Thank you so much. It's time to say goodbye because, you know me, I could chat all day and I have been known to. <laughs> well, look, Leanne, Leanne, thanks very much for having me. I hope the information is useful for your listeners. Oh, it certainly is. Cheers, John. Thanks very much, Leanne. Clink our pretend beer. <laughs> all right. Great. Well, how was that? What a fantastic chat. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. But more importantly, I hope you now know more about getting medical and going for your fit for work assessments. For my old timers who are already out there, Dr. John's insights to black lung were very helpful. And you should now have more of an idea about that dreaded disease, black lung. Please, my peeps, look after yourselves and guard your lungs with your life. And also what came out from it is how important it is that we do go and have our cold board medicals, not just or your medical, whatever it is, line of work you're in, because it's a great way to go and have a full checkup whether you want it or not. And all sorts of things can be found and sorted out if you catch it early. So don't freak out too much. Just go and get her done. Now, have you signed up for my new Q&A Facebook Live weekly? They're a video, yes, with me, Mad Mumsy, you and me and a few other people. It's growing, which is great. This is a closed group. And first of all, you sign up over at patreon.com forward slash beers with a minor. And once you've signed up there, you can request to join the Facebook group and I shall let you in. It is $5 per month. Oh, ouch, hey? How expensive. But remember, that's once every week. So I'm aiming for about half an hour, but the last one went for nearly an hour. And the replays are always available, so you can keep going back and, and having a look. You can already watch the recordings that we've already done. Hopefully you think five bucks a month is worth it, like the others who have already signed up. If you are one of my special peeps, thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. Replays to all the videos are available in case you can't make it live, so don't worry about that too much. And your engagement and comments are always welcome. If you just want to show some support to me each month, Mad Mumsy, for what I'm trying to do here for everybody... You can do that too over at Patreon. You choose the amount. I think it starts at $1. 
So per month you can you can decide how much and I'll every single cent helps so that I can create podcasts more often and keep doing what I'm doing just for you. And remember all the links we spoke about in this episode, like the Tough Minds app and G- GP Super Clinics, anything that you want to know about, head over to the show notes, madmumsy.com forward slash biz 65. Until next time, stay safe, be real, be special and have fun. For we only live once. Cheers. Cheers.